What's going on to the AMC Stock family? In today's video, we will be talking about how Jim Cramer did indeed mock the AMC Stock family, and you guys will hear exactly how, but I'm just going to give one quick example just so you guys know. He did say that many AMC investors do not know how to read a balance sheet or a filing sheet. There were many more examples how he did point to a market sell-off, and that was basically the claim that he was having throughout the entirety of his talk on his CNBC show, but the market is already starting to have a balance up. Now, to be fair, Jim Cramer also did mention, which again, you guys will be hearing in his interview in just a few minutes that he does expect a short selling covering and so when you cover your short selling position that's when there usually will be a green candlestick and that's what we have right now i think that the anti technical setup is absolutely phenomenal these are the type of wick candles that we need to see on the daily chart the one year one day chart we do not need to be scrutinizing this one equity there's no reason why we need to go into the one day one minute chart because this will not tell us anything now we know that it's going down now that we know it's going up but really what is this indicating to us we need to go on the the yearly chart. So now that we're on the yearly chart, what is Jim Cramer saying? He did predict that we are going to have a short selling covering as soon as tomorrow, which is now today. So was he correct on that? We have to give credit where credit is due. Yes, he was. Was he correct though, that the market would have a continuation of a sell-off? He thinks, and he believes that the market throughout September will continuously decline. So he thinks that AMC and the entire market, the S&P 500, Tesla, all these equities, they will continue to go down and these indices. Well, thus far, that prediction has been incorrect. Now, are they trying to do this on purpose? Is Jim Cramer trying to do this on purpose? Are the hedge funds and the institutions trying to do this on purpose? I don't think so. I simply believe that a lot of these hedge fund managers, they just simply believe and they don't understand how stocks can have such a continuation to the upside, like how we've been seeing throughout the entirety of 2021, all the way when GameStop and AMC respectively went up at least a thousand percent for each one of their equities. And if you combine that with the seasonality of September, the September month is usually not the best month for the major indices and for a lot of the equities. I think that is where they're getting a lot of their predictions from. However, has their prediction been correct thus far? Not yet. And so the ultimate test will be to see if AMC and a lot of these other indices will they decide to go up in share price over the next few days. That will confirm 100% that Jim Cramer's prediction of the September sell-off will be invalidated. And not only that, I did say that the technical setup for AMC is absolutely phenomenal. Why so is that? We're going to talk about this very quickly before we get into that interview because you guys need to hear what he decided to say about the AMC stock family. So over here, these are the type of wicks that we need. That is because there are so many support levels. You could draw as many support levels as you would like. And that is simply because there are so many candlesticks. There's so much volume fluctuation and so many candlestick fluctuations that support levels are everywhere. The important difference between all the support levels though is we need to understand where are the demand zones? Where are the buyers stepping in? We don't need to necessarily look at the candlesticks and their wicks. We need to know when individual individuals will start stepping in. So we could draw one level at $36 a share, almost 37. And that's basically where we were just a few days ago, or actually just even yesterday. So yesterday we have $37.54 a share, which is extremely close to this support level. So I'm actually going to keep this level because if you look all the way to the beginning of June, we had not one, but actually two instances of there being an extreme amount of volume. And using that same logic, we can apply that concept to this side of the chart, or in other words, the right side of the chart. And therefore the same concept should be applied. And then there should be a lot of demand as soon as we get to that $36.50 a share level and then after that the buyers will step in and we will start having our next leg up because any equity they need a breather they need to calm down before they end up having that next short squeeze after you hear what Jim Cramer has to say let me know in the comment section do you agree with this theory about the September sell-off are you a bull throughout the entire month of September you buy stocks because you think they're headed higher not because they've come down from their highs you buy stocks when they're too cheap not merely when there's some sort of dip a dip is not a reason to buy in itself, even as dips have been buying opportunities. I spent the last couple of weeks warning you not to buy stocks here. I told you that we've been hit and will be hit late September every year, two decades, big swoon. Yet I think there are lots of people who've forgotten that stocks can still go down and stay down. It's just dawning on them that you can lose big bucks in stocks. Others just got into the market recently, so they've never seen a sell-off happen. They feel betrayed. They want stocks to go back up because it's their right. It's right because they're like vacuum cleaners with warranties or something. How dare they go down? Maybe because I've been doing this for 40 years, I have a different approach. I look for reasons not to buy stocks just because they're down. I'm not attracted to dips. I'm attracted to stocks where we've got good reason to believe they'll be able to bottom and start working their way higher. If I don't see those reasons, then I will not pull the trigger. Let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about here. 
First, let's start with the Chinese conundrum. Everybody finally, they're finally starting to talk about it. I love that. Thank you. Last week, I mentioned there's this real estate developer called Evergrande with $300 billion in liabilities that could be on the verge of going under. Now, unless you're a country, you should never have that kind of debt load. Sure, there are a handful of companies that are large enough to count as countries. Evergrande's not one of them. This is a property developer that's so strapped for cash, it probably can't pay the interest due this week on some of that debt. The Chinese Communist Party seems to be no friend of Evergrande, which was founded by a guy who at one point was the richest man in China. This year, their government has remembered that it's supposed to be a communist regime, which is bad news if you're a capitalist in need of a bailout because they want common prosperity. And we had uncommon rich people running this. Of course, there's a silver lining here. Despite their embrace of free markets over the last 40 years, at the end of the day, China does have a command economy. If the government wants Evergrande's management team to go down, well, the shareholders can get saved. That's what will happen. If they want to punish the shareholders but save the financial system, they'll let the stock go to zero but bail out the creditors. If they want to punish everybody but let the business keep running, they'll nationalize it. They're an authoritarian regime. We keep thinking there's some sort of democracy. They can do whatever the heck they want. Problem is, we don't know what they want. That's why we can't just jump in here. While we think the Chinese government must have a plan, we have no plan what that plan is. And most investors wouldn't believe them anyway. So we have to let this play out. I'm calling it the Chinese conundrum. Second, there's this debt ceiling issue. Now, we've been through a number of these debt ceiling issues, these tussles. They always end up getting resolved. This one will be no different. The worst was 10 years ago when our government got hit with a debt downgrade by the S&P. It was wrongheaded. Uh, the market dropped 19%. But it did cause a bottom. However, if you tried to anticipate that down 19% when it would bottom, you got run over by a freight train, 400 cars. Again, I think the debt ceiling will be raised or the White House will find some sort of workaround. But we could be in for a lot more sturm and drang before that happens. Third, not long ago, we thought we'd get an infrastructure bill, maybe even another stimulus package. Fifth, the Federal Reserve meets this week, and there's rampant talk about how they'll taper their bond buying program. Aren't you sick of the word taper? If the S&P 500 is down 10% from its highs, and Fed says nothing about tapering, will that send stocks higher? Is the absence of a negative when you don't even know what that negative is positive? No. Six, I spent all of the last two weeks warning you that now we're in the seasonally weakest time of the year and you should either go short or take something off the table. But given that the market pulled back ahead of time, does that mean the weakness is baked in as painful as today was? You could argue, and I will, that we're still at the beginning of the decline because the calendar is very ugly for the next couple of weeks. The fact that the Dow Jones average has turned negative for the quarter means nothing. It's just a collection of stocks. Collections don't collectively decide to stop going down. The idea that I'm now seeing and hearing panic and negatives is positive. If only because we've been castigated for being too negative for these last two weeks. It was impossible to read my mentions called me even more than usual on Twitter because I was so negative, so negative. Well, sorry. Next, we need fewer IPOs flooding the market with excess supply. Turn off the darn IPO spigot, and corporate buybacks can help digest these shares. But we've got a seemingly endless supply of new stocks. Most of them I don't really want. Most of them you don't want. Most of them stink. And that's putting real pressure on the market. If these insiders got to get out at all costs, what the heck? What you, why should you buy from them? Makes no sense. The deals in the pipe, they must be canceled to make me more bullish. Finally, you got to consider your fellow shareholders, often they're your greatest enemy. They know how to buy things, whether it's crypto or tech or cruise lines or meme stocks, and they think their buying has the power to push stocks higher. Magical buying. And diamond hands. And it worked for a while. Uh, uh, it didn't work anymore. Do we think these meme investors will suddenly start saying, you know what? I got to do the present value of GameStop's business? I mean, maybe we ought to figure out the, the discounted cash flow of AMC. <laughs> They never cared about that before. They certainly haven't learned how to do it now. Do you think they have real reasons when they make a case for buying something here? I don't know. Have you ever read what they have to say? They're on a permanent intellectual vacation. Look, I've been adamant. I mean, pound the table adamant that while we can have a temporary short covering rally, I bet you we get one tomorrow. This market's likely to get hammered here. I don't want you sucked in. It's been done every year for 20 years in this period. Now, others are finally joining in. They're saying, oh, my, maybe it's bad here. Well, you know, the bear, well, uh, we've been going ourselves. You know what I mean? And they've been saying I'm Yogi or like the one that's in like the uh, E.B. White. What is that guy? The uh, panda, whatever's in that way. You know, you know that guy. 
Well, whatever. I'll come up with them during the break. Uh, wait, 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 come on. Will you help me here? What is the one? The guy, the, uh... Yo, yo, poo! They think I'm poo! Like I'm poo! I've been seeing that on Twitter. He goes, he's poo! I thought it meant something else. Anyway, that alone doesn't give you a reason to buy. I can't honestly turn bullish in this market until you turn bearish, until we come up with some rationale for why the selling is going to stop. Right now, we simply don't have one other than the fact that we're poo. So, what, so we sit tight and we wait for something that might compel us to buy a stock because we think it will go higher. For the moment, though, we got nothing to hang our hats on. Remember that thing I did with the hats? If anything, we have a lot of reasons to sell, including tonight's report from Lenar, where the great home builder actually missed guidance. Here's the bottom line. Mindless dip buying has been a fantastic strategy for 15 months, but it's worthless in the face of a serious sell-off, which is what we have now. I've been encouraging you to sell ahead of what's usually the weakest time of the year. I can't turn positive until I find an actual reason to change my mind. For the moment, we're not getting any. So please, you want to be a buyer? Find, find a reason to buy. Let the pain of late September unfold before you pull the trigger.